But what I want to talk to you this morning about is a little bit about treatment of flowers. So what we've been doing is on our website, if you go to our blog button, you'll see that we have in our drop down menu, lots of little live videos on how to condition flowers. And one flower that we're asked quite a lot about is lilies. So when you get your lilies, whether it be wholesale or even from your supermarket or your local flower shop, chances are they might come arrive to you in plastic. So the first thing to do is remove the plastic from the flowers. Now the reason for that is all flowers give off a gas called ethylene gas. And ethylene gas is a ripening gas or a maturing gas. And what it does, it encourages the flowers to open. So when you leave your flowers inside the plastic, excuse me, the gas can't escape. And what happens, it's releasing this ripening gas, which can't escape, and it's inclined to react on itself. And sometimes that's what you find if you buy flowers, maybe from a supermarket that may not be treating the flowers as, as you know, professionally as a local flower shop. What you might find is when you look inside the plastic, you'll see all the leaves are gone slimy, do you know that way? So to stop that happening, just get your scissors, and just remove the plastic, and the best thing to do is just cut it off. Normally good sharp scissors, this scissors is catching very as we're flying. So remove the plastic. So then you're left with, there's 10 stems. So in a bunch that we would buy in wholesale, there's 10 stems. Now normally they're wrapped together at the end with an elastic band. I would always say remove the elastic band, because that can, even though that wasn't on tight, that can delay the water going up the stem. So first things first, now obviously I'm gonna be doing this slow, you know that way, so there will be a delay between me cutting the flowers and putting them in water, you know that way. So normally like I would be doing this a lot faster and there'd be no delay at all, but I just want to explain each reason. So the first thing is I'm going to cut an inch of all the flowers on a slant. So I'm just going along there, good sharp scissors, and cut the flowers on a slant. When you cut on a slant, you open up a larger hole in the end of the stem than if you cut straight across. So when the flower goes to drink water, it has a larger hole to, you know, to suck up the water. The next thing to do, that's our bell going there. Some of the students are obviously arriving. They're just going to get the door there. Sorry about this. Grand. That's the thing about live video. So you never know what's going to happen. So the next thing then is to remove the foliage below the water line. So I'm going to take each lily up individually. So if you find that your bucket of water, that the water is going to come up to approximately here, that's where you should remove the water from. So you can just use your hands and you can just see here, just use your hands and just slide your hand along and that way there you're removing the leaves. And it's easier to do each of the stems individually, you know that way. So just get your, your hand, grip your leaves and just slide your hands down. So all our, leaf, all our stems and lilies there, we're removing the foliage reward below the water line. It's the leaves that cause the water to go smelly and make bacteria grow in the water. So first of all, you have to make sure that your water has been sterilized. So again, if you've been watching some of our previous live videos, I would have showed you where we sterilize our buckets using domestic bleach, filling our buckets up to the top of water, putting a good squeeze of domestic bleach into the water, leaving it for five or 10, 15 minutes, and then pouring that water into our next empty bucket. We don't rinse our buckets and we don't dry our buckets. We just turn them upside down. We then refill them with tap water and we fill them approximately halfway. So that's the idea of removing the leaves below the water line, that the water in our buckets will be coming up to approximately here and none of our leaf then is in the water. We then add to that flower water a measure of flower food. So the flower food will encourage the lily buds to open. As you can see, these lilies are quite tight. It'll take them two or three days to open up. So the flower food will encourage the lily buds to open, but it's also a preservative. So it'll prolong the life of the flowers, but it'll also stop bacteria growing. Now people may suggest to you to add sugar to the water. Sugar would do, it would feed the flowers. The only thing about sugar, it's going to encourage bacteria to grow. Other people will encourage you to add 7-Up to the water and to be honest, any fizzy drink will actually do. So you could actually add Coke, 7-Up, or sorry, I've obviously mentioned 7-Up, Fanta, Lilt, you can add any of them, but the why they recommend normally the 7-Up is because it's clear. You can imagine if you added Coke to your water, your water is all going to be discoloured. Now it's nothing to do with the 7-Up, it's actually the carbon in the water, like the fizz, and the flowers absolutely love that. So yes, if you want to, you can add a little drop of 7-Up, but normally you find it's expensive enough buying it for the flowers, sorry, for your kids, never mind buying it for your flowers. Other people might suggest you add um, disciplines or anodins. Don't add any of them. I would recommend to stay away from them. Years and years ago, like the plain anodin that was available on the market, people did find that was at, what was added to the anodin did absolutely, absolutely help to get the water up the stem. 
But nowadays with anodin, you have anodin extra, anodin soluble, anodin, anodin with primrose oil, and you find none of these anodins work. So my recommendation would be stay away from it altogether. So stick to the domestic bleach, your flare food, clean water, removing the plastic, taking an inch off the end, cutting them on a slant, removing the leaves below the water line, and then the final thing is add your flowers to the water. And what I would recommend is every day or two, take a small smidgen off the end of your stems, maybe a centimeter, cut on a slant, and by just removing that small amount off the end of your stems, it encourages your flowers to suck up water. So immediately they're gonna suck up the water, and the more water you can get up to the top of your flowers, the longer they're going to last, because your preservative is in your water, but also it's going to encourage the flowers to open. One of our other videos, obviously these, li these lilies aren't um, open at the moment, so I can't show you, but obviously in a day or two I will. But on one of our previous videos, I have shown you how to remove the pollen from the lilies when they do open. Thanks a million for watching. If you have any questions, just feel free to email me here at the school at info at flowerschoolireland.com. So, what are we going to do now? Well, this morning we talked about some lilies and I showed or demonstrated how to treat lilies. So these are the lilies that I treated this morning. So this is just a little follow-on video. And as you can see, already the lilies are starting to open. And when the lilies open, you can see the pollen on the inside. Now the pollen is like the eggs of the flower. It's a little bit, little bit by go forth and multiply. And the flower is going to push all its energy into the pollen. So what we would recommend, a couple of reasons, right? Well, I would recommend removing the pollen because what happens to the pollen, it'll start to go dusty and it'll mark the inside of the flower and it can kind of ruin the flower and it, looks, it doesn't look nice on it. The other thing is if you're inclined to hit off it, you know the way, it can go onto your clothes, it can go onto your skin and for some people it kind of, it's, it's hard to remove and you always find the minute you wet it, like it's even more stubborn to remove. And another problem with the pollen is if it falls off, you know what I mean, and it falls on furniture or tablecloths or even if it was at a wedding and somebody with an outfit or even the bride hits off the pollen, it can destroy your clothes. So to remove the pollen, it's nothing really drastic. You just get your fingers in there, kind of grip around the pollen pods and just literally pull them off and that's how they come off. I missed off two of them there, but I'm also not doing this in front. So you just lift off the pollen, and that way then, at this stage, it's still immature. It's just starting to go powdery, you know that way? But at this stage, it's not going to mark your fingers. And if you like, once your container's not a glass vase, right? But if you just drop this into the water that your lilies are drinking, the feed or the food that's in them pollen pods will feed your lilies and encourage the rest of the lilies to open up more. I probably wouldn't recommend doing that if it's a glass vase because it doesn't look nice when you look through a glass vase and you see all these pollen pods floating around in it. It can sometimes look like cigarette butts. Well, to me, I think it looks like cigarette butts. So I just want to show you a few um, items that you could use when you're treating your flowers. So this morning I talked about cutting an inch off the end of the flowers to encourage the flowers to drink up water. Now this is something you can purchase from your local flower shop or anybody that's from a florist and is watching this. You can also purchase it from your local supplier. So this is called Quick Dip. Quick Dip is a hydrator for flowers. It works on all flowers. There are certain flowers I definitely recommend to use it. With lilies, it's not really necessary to do it, but it does help. So you'll find once the lilies start to go out of season, so they are really a June flower. Now they're still readily available and there's no problem getting lilies most of the year round. But you will find they're not going to be at their best from say October, November onwards. So to hydrate them and to get the water up the stem much quicker, I would recommend using the quick dip. And what you normally do is you put between three and five centimeters of the quick dip into a small container. And you just dip one to three centimeters of the stem, the bottom of the stem, into the quick dip, literally for one second. That's why it gets the name quick dip. So literally dip it in, take it back out again, and immediately place them in your vase of cold water. And you will find then that your flowers will drink the water much faster and the water gets up to the head faster. Another thing I would recommend, or another product to use, would be flower food. Now you can buy flower food in a liquid form, so this is kind of a liquid form. You can buy it in powder form, and normally here at the school, we use maybe this one because, um, just can't find the beginning over here, just to open it. Um, it's just it's faster for us. It's like a little measuring spoon inside it. It's a bit like um, measuring out baby formula, but obviously don't give this to babies. 
and we normally find one spoon does a base and two spoons does a bucket but I would recommend read your directions towards litres and pints just to make sure you use the, the right quantity. If you're buying your lilies from a flower shop, chances are there's one of these sachets, maybe sellotape to the outside. And again, this is only a small sachet here. This one has about double the quantity. There's a car alarm going off outside there. And I'm just gonna shut the window. Sorry. That's quiet that down a little bit. So um, you can get these sachets. Normally they're sellotaped to the outside of your bunch of flowers. Again, just read the directions on the back because sometimes it's one per pint or it could be two per litre. So just read the directions and you could use that instead. And another item that you can purchase, and especially for anybody that is in a flower shop, to prolong the life of their flowers is this stuff here. We call it Chrysal Glory. Chrysal being the name of the company and Glory being the name of the product. And what this is, this is a hydrator for the petals. So you spray this directly onto your flowers. It also works on foliage as well. And basically it hydrates the petals kind of from the outside. It's similar to spraying your flowers or misting your flowers with water. And often I would recommend that this morning when I was talking about the jip, anybody that was watching us live on Facebook, I was showing how to treat jip and I said you could spray it like with water or with a mister to prolong the life of it. If you did have this product, the Christ of Glory, this would even be better. So the chemical that's inside this will definitely preserve the jip a lot longer and for the likes of your lilies and especially if you're doing wedding bouquets and you find that your flowers are going to be out of water obviously for a certain amounts of time. So say a bride getting married on whatever day, say Saturday, and her wedding is at maybe two o'clock in the day. The bride, the florist is probably removing the flowers from water at least 12 o'clock that morning. So she's removing the flowers, the bouquet from water, she's drying off the stems and she's wrapping up the stems with ribbon. So then when the bride gets her bouquet, it's out of water. Now obviously the florist has preserved and has treated the flowers and conditioned everything to the last. But just to give it that extra little bit of kick, because the bouquet is going to be out of water all day, most flowers, what they do is to use this Chrysler Glory and they spray it on the wedding bouquet and that definitely helps to prolong the flowers throughout the whole day. So that's a few little tips there, again just following on from our short video this morning on lilies. If anybody has any questions, obviously just email us here at the school at info at flowerschoolireland.com. Thanks a million for watching. So a quick follow on from my last video, we've just had a couple of comments there, people asking how to get the lilies open faster. The trick with lilies is to cut them as short as possible. So when these lilies came in this morning, they were much, much taller than they were, right? And again, anybody that was watching our previous earlier video, you will have seen the length of the lilies. But I know I want these lilies like with shorter stems when I go to use them over the weekend. So instead of like just taking the inch off them, I probably took like 30 centimeters, I'd reckon, off the end of the stems. So that's one trick. If you purchase your lilies and they're that height, but you know that you'll only need them that height, cut that amount of stem off to get them as short as possible. The second thing is, normally we say cold water, like have your flowers in cold water and that will help to preserve the life of them. But if you want lilies to open faster, just maybe put some hot water into your cold water. So basically, tepid water. So by having the water, you know what I mean, just more like room temp temperature, very mild, lukewarm, tepid water, that will also encourage the lilies to open. I mentioned earlier on about the pollen pods, so removing the pollen pods, placing them in the water, or using flower food, and that's another thing to help the flowers open faster. But anybody that's been watching some of my other videos on conditioning flowers, two things I often mention to help to prolong the life of the flowers, and I always say, remove the plastic from the flowers. By removing the plastic off the flowers, you allow the ethylene gas to escape. So ethylene gas is a gas that flowers naturally release. And ethylene gas is a maturing gas or a ripening gas. So when you want lilies to open, and this is going to totally contradict everything I've told you in the past, but what you do is if you get a large black refuse bag, obviously any colour, so a large refuse plastic bag, and kind of like puff the bag, like open the bag out as far as you can, and try and form or create like a hat or a hood over your bunch of lilies and maybe catch it in around the neck of your vase and seal it in. So what you're going to hope, hope what will happen is the lilies will release their ethylene gas but because it's inside the plastic bag it can't escape and it's going to react on the flowers. 
And the other thing, a certain amount of heat and warmth will build up inside the plastic bag and that will also encourage your lilies to open. Now don't just go and leave that indefinitely. A couple of hours would be enough and what I would do is I would check on them. If you're happy enough with how the progress is going, well then just close it back up again and then two or three hours later, check it again. But if you feel that they're opening fast enough, remove the plastic because obviously the plastic makes flowers open faster. Another thing I often mention when I'm talking about prolonging the life of flowers, I always say don't store fruit and veg and flowers in the same room. And the reason for that is fruit and veg naturally give off ethylene gas. And one fruit that's really, really strong with ethylene gas is bananas. If anybody has ever worked in a vegetable shop, fruit and veg shop, and has worked with bananas, you find when they come into the shops, they're normally in a large cardboard box, and within that cardboard box there's a plastic bag wrapped around the bananas. And when you open it, you kind of whiff, you know, this whiff hits you. So bananas normally have a very strong ethylene gas release. And the riper the banana, so if you have a fairly ripe banana or one that's starting to kind of like go a little bit black or has lots of black spots on it, that definitely will be releasing lots of ethylene gas. Now this sounds a little bit funny, but if you could even strap a banana around your vase, you know that way, like sellotape it or tape your bananas onto your vase or onto your bucket, the ethylene gas from the bananas will react on the flowers and help them to open faster. So I hope that has helped. So basically, keep your room warm, keep the water tepid, cut them as much as you can, cut them every four hours. Remove the pollen, because obviously the flowers are going to push all their goodness into the pollen, but the pollen pods may be placed down in the water, obviously along with flower food. I find natural light helps, so even if the sun is not shining outside, place your vase of flowers near the window that is getting some natural light. And as a last, last resort, plastic bag placed over the flowers to allow the ethylene gas to build up and the heat build up inside the plastic. And the next last resort is then black bananas sellotaped to the outside of the vase. So that's a couple of hints then to treat your lilies and basically to encourage them to open faster. After that, I just say novena. It's best of luck to you. Listen, thanks a million for watching.